going on, guys? Welcome to the Sub Podcast, episode 112. You know where the players dwell. That's right. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Uh, across from me, uh, virtually, we have Lawrence Deloge and Luke Trevisi. What's up going on, guys? How's it going, guys? Uh, and we have two very special guests. They're brothers that I used to work with back in my Echo days. Now they've uh, gone off and made me feel like I'm not doing anything with my career as they're crushing it. But we have uh, my big bros, part mentors, you know, guys that I look up to. We have Romeo Raft and Gal. What's going on, guys? Good, good. What's up? What's good. We're on, diff- oh, we're on different coasts. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Ro ran away. Ro went to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he abandoned New York for everything that it was to him. Hey. And uh, he's, where are you exactly now? Long Beach? I am in LA. Oh, LA. All right, cool. Okay. That's All what's right. up, man. So, Rose over working at Huff right now. Um, then we got contrasting. Uh, Raph is still here. And he's at LV back at it again. And um, okay. how, how's yeah. this quarantine been going for you guys? Catch me up. What's been, what's been happening with you guys and how this has been going? Uh, I'll let him go first. <laughs> it's been going good, man. I'm, you know, quarant- quarantining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a lot of forced time, you know, forced quality time with the kids. So <laughs> it's been going good. I need a haircut really bad, but I'm not going to protest about it. I'm good. <laughs> <that. laughs> we'll hold off. But yeah. I think we could all use haircuts right now. You know, real. so uh, yeah, man. <laughs> 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 uh, for the audio listeners, Lawrence um, really looks like he's just been casted for training day. He's looking great. <laughs> Young Denzel Washington up here. Uh, I, I haven't had a haircut in around eight weeks now. So, you know, it's uh, Dang, it's as long as cool. ever. I haven't Mine's shaved. I haven't done anything, you know. So I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Ro, you're on the West Coast. Raphael, you're on, you're on the East Coast. Yeah. I mean, I'm and, in Brooklyn. Uh, you're in Brooklyn. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how's quarantine been going for you? Uh, it's not, I mean, I work from home mostly anyway, but uh, just a lot more responsibilities now. Like, my girl's trying to finish uh, grad, uh, this semester of grad school, so I'm pretty much oh. like a house mm-hmm. husband. Okay. I cook, I clean, I take care of the dog, yeah. and then I start, I start my work day around like 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is that where you went right back there, to... Though. Is that why you went back to LV? Is because you got in trouble with the with the girlfriend? Oh no, that was that was like a whole other thing. Just kind of like you know, economics. Where you know, it's kind just of trying like, to secure uh, the bag. I got you. Exactly, exactly. Bro, how long have you been working from home? Like, when did they tell you that you could stay home and kind of hang out? Dude, what? I don't know. I, I can't even remember. I don't even know what day it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Mother's Day. That's about it. But um, yeah. Oh, yeah, happy Mother's Day. Happy yeah, Mother's happy Day. Mother's Day oh, thank guys. you, thank you. <laughs> All the mothers wearing Yeezys out there. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. And Philas. <laughs> and Philas. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember. As soon as it started in LA, we were cut off. So I've been fortunate to be working from home. But, you know, I'm, I'm playing teacher as well. It, it's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, back yeah. In the I didn't even think about that. What, what are you teaching? Because you have to probably relearn it in order to teach it. <laughs> no, man. They're... I got a five-year-old and a three-year-old, so it's just, Oh, all right. Yeah, that's right. They're just reading. They're reading. Wow. Right. That's great. For some reason, I thought they were older, but now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, the baby shower wasn't even that long ago. No, you were there. Yeah. In yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. I've, I've been gone for five years. It's wow. It's time flew, but yeah, it's been five years. That's really crazy. Crazy. I've been keeping um, increments of the MJ doc as how long that we've been doing this, so we're... <laughs> That doesn't, episode that's late though, right? seven and eight in so like, that's you a lot like, like you got that that tiger that? or something oh, shit, I, got to, I got a lot to catch up on so every every week we record on sunday we record like an hour hour and a half before uh the new episodes of the uh the last dance doc uh for you know we talk about it every week uh what was last week episode five and six uh, one of the uh, one of the main things that was said in uh, episode five was Jordan's uh, inability to, or his non-committal stance on uh, on public issues, uh, mainly being one of those where uh, there was a Senate race uh, with uh, with an incumbent senator. Uh, I forgot his name, but uh, he went up against a black senator or a guy who wanted to take his uh, seat, 
And uh, they were like, Jordan, take a stance. And he was like, hey, Republicans buy sneakers too. And he yeah. didn't. And, and he was heavily criticized uh, for that. Uh, it also was like, a, it felt like an ad. You Like some of that part of the episode, like it was like a Jordan 1 ad. Like it was definitely, yeah. and it, but it brought back a lot of memories uh, for those sneakers. I don't know how, you know, if you guys are, you know, into the Jordan 1, but uh, do you guys have any memories of those sneakers? Um, I didn't, I think my first Jordan was a Jordan four. So I didn't, I don't really remember. Yeah. You had uh, the military the ones. blues. Yeah. I had the military blues when I was a kid, but before that, I don't think I really <coughs> knew. I, I knew of the Jordans, but I just never, I was too young. You know, mm -hmm. I was, you know, we, what, what, what year did the Jordan ones come out? What, uh, 84, 84, 85. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I was, I was four years old. So I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now one ones are my favorite Jordan. To be honest, mm -hmm. like the only one with the swoosh. Well, only one that used to have the swoosh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll go grab mine. You have? You want to see them? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Wait, the originals, bro? You got the OGs? No, 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 no. They got they're retro. Oh, uh, okay. But you know. Yeah. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Old school oh. ones. The out of five thousand. Ah, oh, that's look nice. at him trying to flex on us like that. Oh, yeah, we get it. Oh, he set up his camera next to his closet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Raph, do you need to go to the bathroom for like a five yeah. minutes? <laughs> just come back with boxes. <laughs> we just have a flex contest between brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go no, through all of them. There's a there's no, he, bunch he, he was like, gro growing up, he was always the, because he's, he's two years older than me. So he was the guy who was always putting me on to things. So it's like, you know, with Jordans and stuff, it's like, you know, I'm not like, I wasn't like a kid in third grade, like, oh, I need these Jordans. So it's like, I just want whatever my brother wanted. So that's probably why he picked, he probably picked out those military fours for me. <laughs> <laughs> they were a grade school size and they didn't have my size. So I was like, you need to get these. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, I guess I'll hook yeah. my brother up. Yeah, I guess I'll make yeah. him look good. Yeah. But wait, just let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Cause I met you guys at Echo together, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you talking about, Raph, you talking about, like, doing what your brother wanted to do. How did you guys end up at the same place? Like, how long was one of you guys there before the other? Like, you know, to, not to hop around for a second, but just to get that um, story out of the way. I think, well, I, I actually graduated school uh, before him, even though he's uh, two years older. But we both went to the same school. We went to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, he was studying um, graphic design, I think, and I was doing animation uh traditional animation and after i graduated i was working in animation for a bit um funny story i was working in animation in, until my um until my boss got uh arrested for, for uh trying to hook up with a 13 year old or something like that oh <laughs> animation so then, dudes are weird yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so after 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 that i was like i was like fuck man and like i mean i knew animation like there was a lot of like creepiness in animation but after that, be over 3D, I mean, baby. Yeah. <laughs> after that, I had to like I, I got That's out of like uh, I I got out of animation. After that, That's like a real thing though. Like the dude from Ren and Stimpy, he did he got in trouble too, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. Same reason. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So then after that, I was started working in um the only thing that was really hiring in New York for like illustrators was was streetwear. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I got my first job at at um you guys remember Triple Five Soul? Of course, yes, I, do. I do not. Yeah, it was, before my <laughs> Soul. it was like one of the. I think it was one of the like first kind of streetwear brands in in New York. Mm -hmm. Started in um, I think eighty nine. Oh shit! Uh, they had a store that was like two stores away from Supreme, where Supreme was. Oh. For a long time, and then mm -hmm. they um, they used to do well, you know a couple of things like um, with their uh, you know bags and outerwear and stuff. They used to have art shows on in there in that store. They used to, I think that was like the first Banksy sh show. Yeah, it was in a store in uh, Triple Five Soul. Wow. Wait, really? Uh, wow. Yeah, I remember them setting that shit up. I was like, oh, that's why that's how I first heard about Banksy. And then, yeah. um, so yeah, I was at Triple Five Soul, and my brother, I think, was just it was interning at Echo. Yeah, I was interning as my senior year in college, and then they kind of hired me before I graduated. So. You know, they were looking for other people, and I brought him. 
Yeah. No. We had, well, we had a friend. We had a friend who we had friends who worked at Echo. Like, uh, I think Ewok at the time was like the, one of the head illustrators there. I mean, Ewok that that place is such right a revolving door of amazing yeah. people to go in and out. I feel like everyone's worked there at least uh, for one point in time. If you've been in New York and you've been a designer. Yeah, 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 yeah for definitely sure. like a school of hard knocks back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every streetwear brand started from there or had some kind of yeah. ties there. Yep. Yeah. I think he, he started there and then I, I think I started maybe maybe a year after you were at Echo. You brought me in. Yep. Yeah. I did actually, before I was working there, I did like a an album cover. You guys were in a, he was in a department where they would do like um, album covers and posters for like rap groups. Mm -hmm. So they had like Duck Down, they had like Sean Price and like Buckshot and like, uh, um, who was it? Ninth Wonder. Yeah. And like Tech and Steel and Smith and Weston. Yeah, you guys did Smith the Weston. chemistry album cover? We did the, the three together. So it was chemistry, um, reloaded monkey bars. and monkey bars. Oh, nice. I actually, the drawing oh. is right there. Oh. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Grab so it. I, I grab it. Yeah, but it was like, I, it was like <laughs> what was that blurry thing back there? <laughs> so it's like, um, oh. <laughs> so it was like, I did this um, when I was at Triple Five because my brother's like, oh, we're doing these album covers for these, for this, um, these rappers. It's like, oh, I'll do it. How? I don't even think I got. I don't even think I got paid. <laughs> oh, <I did> <laughs> I did that was part of my junior design salary. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I, I was like, I did it for free. Did it for the prize. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, I, and then I used it. And then I think I used it in my portfolio to get hired, like six yeah, months later, yeah, for sure. So. <clears throat> It worked out. That's so funny. That's yeah. That's wild. So I didn't. I didn't know any of that. That was a great story. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for doing yeah. that. Because <laughs> I met you guys when the ship was really, really going down. Like wow, uh, <laughs> I jumped literally on the Titanic. Yeah, yeah. Man, I did. Uh, yeah, you were in our like fourth office by then. <laughs> yeah. Day, yeah. You had like sticky sticky notes on your desk. Yeah. Like invite, invite coworkers to the comedy show or something <laughs> <laughs> like yeah it was ask funny. someone was like, to hang out with me yeah mm -hmm. please someone <laughs> pretend to like my jokes please oh my god <laughs> well you were doing comedy back then too i started at echo yeah oh, okay That's yeah i mean very horrific horrific bad bad shit it was not good that's why i didn't tell a lot of you guys early on but yeah that's like <laughs> when i started uh I also saw that you guys, uh, your your dad was the was the anchor for New Teen Titans back in the day. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. We did a bunch with, of uh, cartoons. Yeah, he did a bunch of comics. He did Green Lantern, Batman, you know, Thor, Fantastic Four, like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Where he was he was with George Perez for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. Um, and then he worked on a bunch of cartoons like Transformers and GI Joe. And, yeah, stuff back in the day. all that fun stuff from back in the yeah, day. Did that yeah, stuff yeah. like influence you a lot growing up as, as far as like designers? Like, do you I have like so. a big comic book uh, reference portfolio kind of? Um, I would say we started off doing that, like mm -hmm. doing a lot of comic art. I mean, that's around the time when like, you know, um, all those guys became big, like Jim, Jim Lee and like McFarlane and all these guys, Liefeld and Image became huge. Right. So I remember just like us in like middle school, like drawing like that. Yeah. You know, learning how to ink and do all these things. So, but as we went to school, it was kind of like, uh, you know, you learn about other stuff. Right. You just get yeah. into other stuff. Yeah. Very cool. But I mean, I hope my whole, like me, my brother and my sister were all, you know, in the art world. Yeah. Yeah. We just couldn't get away from it, <laughs> I guess. I hear you. Were you guys like, because I'm sure you guys were illustrating early, and I want to go back to the MJ doc in just a second, but um, the, like, because growing up, I was one of the better illustrators in my class, and it gained me a lot of attention, but you guys, having, like, that skill level set in front of you early on, were you guys just, like, nasty in third grade? Mm, I wouldn't say nasty. <laughs> <laughs> we were definitely, like, like, I was definitely, like, the artistic kid in the class. Like, I was the kid who right. could draw a little bit. Yeah. You know? But, um Yeah. But I wouldn't say nasty, you know. We're all right. I saw, bro, you were oh. shit, you were going like, yeah, I was. I saw you nodding your head. <laughs> it was good. It was good. We were all no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were all the class artists, though. But yeah, for sure. He's, he's nice. being a little. 
Um, but yeah, going back to MJ, because I mean, this whole documentary not only applies to like everything that we kind of speak about on a daily basis, but it's a lot of uh, new stuff, at least for me, because born in 89, I wasn't really necessarily conscious for a lot of the stuff that's going on in this. But you guys being a little older, do you, is some of this stuff new to you that's in the dark? Now, I know, Raph, you haven't seen it, but just like speaking about MJ stuff in general, like I didn't know that like Rodman ended up going to Vegas for like a week and shit to get away. I didn't know about Scotty Pippen's like weird contract shit. Like, was there any of this stuff new to you guys? Or maybe like Raph, if you've heard through the media or whatever people, what they're talking about? Uh, I feel like I wasn't like reading the paper. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't reading the sports section. So like all my knowledge of like, or mem memories of all that stuff was just, you know, watching games, you know, watching championships and stuff like that. It wasn't, you know, the, you know, the, the commercials and the sneakers and stuff like that, but all like the, I guess whatever the drama is and all these like insider stories, I would have not known any of those. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know about my brother. He's a little bit. He's two years older, so he might have some. I mean, kind the of Pippin, the Pippin part was definitely new to me. You know, he was always like the Robin to the Batman to me. I never yeah. knew he got paid what what role what number? Seven oh, years, like, eight, seven years, eighteen million. Nuts! That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Wait, what is it? I don't get it. What's the what's the story on that? He had like a, a he made a like an early deal for like a seven year contract, but for eighteen million dollars. When you know later on the contracts inflated so much that like eighteen million dollars was nothing to even like look at. Okay, okay. So like during the championship years, he was getting paid dog shit while Mike and all of them were pioneering, basically paving the way for this legacy to happen. Ah, shit. He was basically yeah. getting paid a dishwasher salary, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Those million dollar like dishwashers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a really high end dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the highest end of dishwasher. <laughs> I think some I think something you, you saw that was interesting to me is a lot of the stuff that flew under the radar, you know, twenty five, thirty years ago was because of no social media. So like, you know, Jordan going to Atlantic City during the playoff game or, you know, him and, you know, uh, Slim uh, Buller or like, you know, his, the golf guy who, you know, who you know, took some money, like all that stuff, it was kind of, it was known. I remember, you know, obviously growing up in Brooklyn at the time, I remember the Atlantic City trip, but if, and if this was 20, in 2019, him going to Atlantic City, the amount of people with phones and all that shit, it would have been magnified a million times. I think that's, one of the takeaways to me yeah. um and i think uh just obviously a lot of stuff you know it, it it's if you follow the game or if you're like hardcore you will know a lot of it but i feel like some there are certain things that are very uh, they were very interesting like the dream team stuff you know obviously you mm -hmm. knew magic and bird were at the end of their careers uh you know but the isaiah thomas stuff is always a refresher and um I think I mean the the documentary obviously obviously feels like it's being told through Michael Jordan's lens, for sure. Like there's certain things he he goes <laughs> into, but you can also tell there's certain things that you know have been uh, shied away from to me. Are we? Do you think we're gonna finally get some uh, dead dad issues? That's yeah. That's what I'm waiting for. Man. That's what we're all waiting for. Ah, we're all crazy. waiting to see if they're gonna talk. I'm waiting about for that. that. Yeah, waiting for that, and I'm waiting for the flu game. That yes. touched on that yet. Yes, yes, the, yes. The dead father stuff is really uh, interesting because, you know, I, I, from what I read afterwards, when, like, years later, there was, like, some rumors that uh, Jordan Pops had, um, like, molested, allegedly, one of uh, Jordan's sisters. So it's, like, you don't really – yeah, like, it, it, this is all allegedly stuff that I I read, never heard that. Know? Wow. See, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So it's kind of weird. Like, you know, like, you don't hear anything from his ex-wife Juanita like you haven't like she was the one who was with Jordan every night you know or you know with them all the time so you know those are very like uh important pieces that like you you really just haven't been touched on yeah yeah do you think we're gonna get it this this week because they've been they've been touching on the gambling stuff like the past couple of weeks they've been they've been touching on it you know how many how many episodes are, are they slotted for like yeah. There's two every Sundays, and there's ten total. So we got four left. And I yeah. guess that the last two weren't finished when they started airing these because they pushed the date up. 
So I think they're finishing Ooh. it up now as like the time goes on. So we got four more episodes left with two probably just being finished now. Okay. Mm. I'll, maybe I'll just wait. Like just binge it all one no, day? No, no you gotta watch. Binge it all in one day. Because it's not going to get into, into, onto Netflix <clears throat> until like July, July or something. There's already, like, there. it's online somewhere. Like, I found it's a couple everywhere. episodes yeah. from my roommates who missed it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth catching up. I definitely want to know about the gambling stuff more, the dead dad stuff. But I like the little, like, hidden ones we get in there, like the the flag hiding the Reebok shit. Yes. That one was good. That was good. Because that, that shit, perfect. like, I never understood why he was the only one wearing the flag on his short for the Dream Team photo shit. But then when he was like, yeah, fuck Reebok. I didn't want them to fucking get promo off me. But now because he said that in the documentary, they're re-releasing the jacket. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's kind Wait. of like a delayed help. Are you copying that, Cheney? No, I can't. Look, I, I, I wear loud shit, but I, I can't do overly red, white, all, and blue. The all black one. All black <laughs> That's true. I, that yeah. one I might be able to do. I would get that jacket, yo. That jacket sounds fire, yo. It's like, I, I, gotta, wear... I gotta see it. Hold well, on, Luke, do you have the link up? Can I'm you share the screen? I'm looking it up right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, yo. <clears throat> <laughs> we're all right. looking at it oh yeah that's pretty loud mm -hmm. it's Kinda a cool, it's though. a little much for me the only way people wear that shit if it has a supreme logo on it you know what i mean like any other <laughs> that loud without a box logo no one fucks with it i wonder if they're gonna do it in like a in like a 90s cut with like the wide ass sleeves yeah right <laughs> gymnast cut Actually, no, huh? I think i got it for uh hold on one second just so we get a visual right. for the screen oh no you i got, got it right cool. here they put it on the they put it on the left side because mm -hmm. Jordan put it on the right side, right? He put they covered the uh Yeah, the I think they the right flipped side. it. They flipped it so that as like an extra little fuck you. It's great. Well it looks like it already <laughs> looks like it released on May eighth for eighty dollars. So oh, sure. uh, so I'm I'm guessing it's gotta be sold out already. No way. Damn. If you really? keep if you keep, down, if you keep going down, if you keep going down, there should be a link somewhere. Or maybe the only way uh, Reebok sells out of anything is if they're if it's related to Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh, of course, <laughs> that's kind of sad. Uh, can't go here. <laughs> you, you know what else was all very interesting to me too, in terms of uh, in terms of how huge of a uh, an entity uh, Nike is now in terms of you know uh, athletes wearing their sneakers <laughs> and being under the Nike brand from LeBron to like Kevin Durant to. You know all of these major uh, basketball players, and in the '80s, I mean, they were a distant third before Michael Jordan. There was Converse, there was Adidas, you know, and and then you had Nike as this upstart company. And 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 Jordan even talks about how he did not want to go to Nike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how would that change the course of history if if there's no Jordan on Nike, or even if you know, I mean, uh, uh, Tinker doesn't, you know, hit us with the Jordan three to keep, you know, to keep Michael from really wanting to leave. Because the first, two, like, Tinker got the threes, the fours, like, he designed those sneakers. So there's so many different key pieces that, to me, that made the history of Nike and Jordan just all mesh together. And even that, like, kind of, I don't know, that weird, like, back and forth with Nike and Jordan is, like, it's telling of the entire history of Nike in general. Because they had so much trouble with, with Onisuka. They had so much trouble with, um, <laughs> they had so much trouble with, like, Onisuka. They had trouble with, like, a, they had trouble with everybody. And, mm -hmm. they're like, everything was, like, a close call. Like, mm -hmm. Nike, if there's, like, an alternate universe, like, one over where Nike doesn't exist, you know? Mm -hmm. I made this, like, board just to see what it would look like. I just put the three stripes on the one. And mm -hmm. it's clearly not as good, but that silhouette is just so strong that it's still not a bad shoe. Still not yeah. a bad shoe. Mm -hmm. that ain't it. it looks like a top ten. It does look like a top ten. It does look like a top ten. It looks like some ponies, and I, I know. <laughs> it's got the stripes <laughs> on it. For some reason, they look like ponies. That was crazy how he wore him back in the garden, though, even though his feet were bleeding. I didn't that know was, that either. Yeah. That was a crazy story, too. Mm -hmm. They were like yeah. a size and a half too small, and fucking he still played in them. That's why he's the GOAT. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so you guys now, after enough Jordan talk, now you got to tell us your favorite Jordan shoe. That's that for as guests, you got to let us know so we can judge you based on your taste. What's that? Your favorite Jordan shoe? I'd have to say fours. Yeah. Yeah. Fours. Um. Yeah, I mean that's the one I that's the first one I had. I had fours, so I think I think just the. I never had them growing up, but the what is it, the cement ones, like the white and gray. Yes, yeah, I, I have them. I have them now because I'm an adult. <laughs> but, yeah, those ones. I think. Orange, you gonna say something? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I was I was just kind of just talking about this uh this cla- back to this jacket that it is it is sold out on Reebok's uh, website. They do have a black and silver version of that, which is still available. So yeah, I just oh, uh, all right, word. So cop it, Cheney. No. Be that guy. Come on. No. You're the only one, yo, you're the only one that with Reeboks right now. You're yeah, the yo, one. see? They, you're you're in the the Echo, office, Echo Office used to bust my balls about wearing <laughs> Reeboks every fucking day. You guys were <laughs> relentless. I got nothing but – I got, like, Reeboks stacked underneath my desk right now. <laughs> yeah. See? You know me. Yeah. <laughs> but you're the whitest guy here. You're, the, like, the most American. That's, like, you know – it's a little scary if you get a you get the white you get the you know what maybe it's a better call you're right yeah, yeah. I can't do it I can't do you it can't do it people <laughs> we'll start thinking you, you don't want you want to go back outside I can't show too much pride <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're right you're right <laughs> oh that's fucking so great, speak, though. speaking of uh, Jordans uh, there was uh, some images of a, a new uh, fire red three oh yeah uh, that. That normally, you know, normally on a on a, a Jordan three, a four, or five, or a six, there's either Nike Air on the back, or there's a Jumpman logo. But uh, the good people at Jordan Brand decided that it would be a great idea to put both of them on the back in a translucent uh, sole, a translucent back. Yeah. And uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> I got CDs. Yes. Oh. Damn, they're running out of ideas. you know last week we were talking about um all the nike basically we all came to the conclusion that the nike air is always better than the jump man but Mm -hmm. yeah they're they're trying to cheat and this is dog shit yeah this is is that it's one of the it's one of those those 80 percenter things i I was telling you about right yeah it's true yeah uh for the people who don't who aren't in the discord who should you know join the discord first of all but what's the 80 20 thing no, I was just always saying that, like, when people are, like, want something, like, I guess people want these fire red Jordan 3s, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nike will put out, like, something that's 80% what they want. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll put yeah. out, they'll put, they'll put these out. Yeah, this was, a, this was, came out of a discussion about the, uh, the Vaseline ones. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. They'll, they'll, get, they'll get you right to the point where it's like, oh, I guess I'll still buy it. And then yeah. I'll also still wait to buy what I really want down the line. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're sneaky. So yeah, that sneaky. that is that is something we we definitely discussed on this podcast with uh, where, like you said, like you know, on a three they'll put uh, they'll put uh, a jump man on the on the the tab, but then on the bottom they'll put Nike, or they'll they'll never give you everything you you truly want, and that is yeah. uh, and to me that is the work of a, a gentleman named Gentry Humphrey. Who is the uh, he ha- he's he's back at Jordan Brand and uh, he left the line in, in 2011 and mm-hmm. he uh, he came back seven years later and now we're getting these these retros that are giving you something but they're not giving you everything and um, I've I've always I've gone on record plenty of times on this podcast the same that uh, that you know after uh, when he left you know we started getting Nike Air on on the back of sneakers we started getting jordan uh jordan ones the they started coming back out with the nike air on we started getting what people really wanted and for a sneaker the fire red threes that so many people have clamored for they want you're getting this like like you said this this science project that (laughs) is just (laughs) it's it is what it is there was an attempt yeah but I mean, it's, I don't know, it's smart on that, on their end, I guess, because it's like, people will buy it, and they just can't keep retroing, retroing, like, the originals. 
every yeah. year or whatever, you know? Yeah. Kind of, they got to space it guys, out and they got to fill Are you guys still really gaps. buying sneakers like that? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I You're only talking buy... about how you got a bunch of Reeboks under your desk, you know? And I know, yeah. uh, I mean, back when we were in the office, bro, you were always buying, like, the pair of, like, the new tech and stuff, trying to keep up, at least. I did, I did. Um, I'm older now. I have a house. <laughs> I need I need furniture. You know, that's kind of where my money goes to. But you know, I still I still look at sneakers. I'm kind of like off the Nike thing right now. It's it's a little, you know, I'm wanting like some New Balances. Okay. Yeah. That's my shit right now. Yeah, yeah. I love oh, the those Steve packs. Jobs. Yeah, you seen those Dub Pat things? Yeah, I actually have. They're very nice. Yeah, the military <clears> with a little hint of orange. Those things are going for like over a thousand on StockX right now, though, so I can't. You know, I caught a big fat L on those. But, um, yeah, sneakers, you know, that's kind of like, <laughs> but we're on a totem pole now. Yeah. You're just going to keep yeah. going with the dad shit? And I got more bunch, on yeah. the dad I angle? Got, dude, I pulled out a bunch and they all started crumbling. So I'm like, why am I even, you know, holding on to these? Uh-huh. So I'm not mad at them for like retroing stuff because all the old stuff is done. It's like dust. You got to, you know, bring those back. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Graf, what no, about I, you? Are you buying sneakers like that? Oh, sorry. I know you can go. Oh no, I, I wanted to ask both of you guys a question. Since you know, you you uh, you, like you said, you weren't, you know, you're still in sneakers. Obviously, that that love never goes away. Yeah. But um, you know, there's certain sneakers that obviously that make comebacks, and and 2020 obviously seems like the year of the the dunk. And I we just recently saw where a pair of uh Paris uh Crazy. SB went for like sold for like fifty thousand dollars and it's it's like what the fuck like those are sneakers you know 12 maybe 10 12 years ago you can get for you know 1500 i mean and and, and even that is you know a crazy amount but fifty thousand dollars for a pair of sneakers i gotta google this (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean those were crazy rare when they first came out too you know those and the futuras and the, the pigeons those are all kind of like those top tier sbs that nobody could pull oh. off yet those that yeah these mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah these guys oh what's the what's the graphic on it that's <clears throat> like yeah, an illustration know, it's, a, it's a pair of stuff Paris stuff <laughs> <No, it's Paris. laughs> like some french shit yeah. you know it's like a croissant or something yeah. there's something on there i don't know all right french fries fifty thousand dollars <laughs> French fries. Yeah, they just. They Wait, they just sold, sold for that, or they just? Yeah, they sold for fifty, uh, fifty, Ooh, uh, fifty k. Uh, let's see. That's what who, I, I don't know who buys any of this shit. Do you think like someone, like some head dude at StockX, is just buying mm. it just to? Oh, just to inflate prices. Just, just yeah. to bring I the do. Back? I do think Somebody some of this goes. This is like is attributed by brands just rebuying stuff that they don't have anymore. Like if they go in the archive and they're like, "Oh shit, we don't have any Paris Dunks anymore." There's got to yeah. be a guy at Nike buying this shit. I mean, when I was at Reebok, they were kind of doing that. It wasn't to the capacity I'm sure that these guys have to, but that's crazy. Yeah. crazy. <clears throat> that's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. see all you see all these SVs that you know were obviously slept on or you know under the radar or. Or even and now it's just it's at a point where it's like it's that bubble that we we always talk about and it's like how long before this bubble burst you know it was maybe five years ago it was jordan ones where that bubble was so you know insane and i, and I just want to ask you guys like you know i mean you see that and you're like where does this end I mean, I see the hype for dunks happening right now, but I don't see any. You see people wearing them. I see the off-white ones once in a while, but hmm. I don't I, see the strange loves for sure. I don't see those going around. Well, it's I also hard to stuff. it's it's hard to see anybody wear anything when we can't really leave our house. Yeah, yeah it's that's true too. hard to remember. <clears throat> yeah, like I'm trying to think the times I've been in the grocery store. I don't think anyone's really been like where, but it's I don't know. Maybe they're waiting for it to get nice out again. Yeah, I live in the suburbs, bro. Everybody's just wearing sandals. (laughs) (laughs) I've been wearing the same sneakers this whole time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I leave them. I leave them outside my door because I don't want to like track stuff in. Yep. So Mm -hmm. it's just they just sit in my hallway. So it's like beaters. I actually did purchase some new. Well, they're not. They're new to me, but I did buy quarantine shoes. 
Um, <laughs> do, do you guys remember the ones with the plate on the bottom? No, you didn't. <laughs> he, he bought soaps. Soaps. <clears throat> soap, shoes? Yeah, soap, soap shoes? Yeah. yeah. Bro, I, so I got these on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yes, I got them yesterday. And I put them on and they were tight. And yeah. I went to take out the the um the padding on the inside to see if I can get them out, and they crumbled immediately. Oh, oh they're That's all they were. Yeah, oh. so I have no insole, but they fit now. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm about to bust my ass trying to grind on some shit. <laughs> Dude, there's like some crazy documentary about the, the inventor of the. the oh, thriller, really? I think. Yeah, I think my coworkers are mentioning. It. Yeah, you got to check it out. The, the dude's like a wacko. Damn, I'm going to try to put it in, good, in a good way. If I find it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yo, <laughs> I was with my girl. We were walking, going to the grocery store. I put these on. I was grinding on shit. She's like, I can't be seen near you if you're going to do this. <laughs> That's like I'm my go- brother. I'm just this- oh, yeah. We- the Heely- I, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. At Echo, I had a pair of Heelys. Oh, fuck Oh, yeah, yeah you dude. did. Yeah, did you roll yeah. into the, the Xerox machine in back? Yeah, the printer was <laughs> mad far. <laughs> so I had to, like, I just bust those out to get to the printer. Oh, hell yeah. I'm with that 100%. <laughs> That's the move. The Echo office was not like a normal office by any means. Oh. Like it's still one of the craziest places I ever worked. Like even Ro, Ro had this bit. He would scare this one girl, Rochelle, and she would scream so loudly. You'd think there'd be a murder going. It would happen. Like yeah, that least... was the, yeah. That's when Vine that was... was big. Vine days. Yeah. Oh, you dropped yeah, my you find those. Yeah. They gotta be on my hard drive somewhere. I told her I was going to bring those back. But yeah, <laughs> it was oh, yeah. so good. There would be yeah, like he, piles of samples that we would jump out of. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Had a rack, had a sample, yeah. <laughs> I bring my dog in just to scare her. Wait, so people I used to work with have come on and they've given me like one good echo story. Now, I don't need you to um, like necessarily uh, dry snitch on anybody. But is there one maybe before I got there, like a good story you could tell us? Uh, I talked about... Uh, oh, how how um someone wanted to kidnap Lloyd Banks? Oh, <laughs> no, we had silly ones. Ours were, ours were just like, like fucking when there would be like celebrities coming in, like they would have to use the bathroom. We would like write like funny shit in the stall. <laughs> <laughs> See, I only I only have the tragic right, ones yeah, where one. <laughs> I only have the ones where like someone needed to get, someone suggested someone needed to get murdered at some point. Like I don't have any of these fun ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Other than oh, like Rose scaring one, Rochelle. One. That was like I a different one. era. Um, Kendrick Lamar. Remember when he was in the office with all of TDE? Mm-hmm. And Seth was trying to sell him on on his own line and and, and giving him like all his designs or whatever. Dude just fell asleep right in front of Seth. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best, dude. I don't even know who Kendrick Lamar was back then, but yo, yeah, props for that. That was. I great. remember. When, I remember when we met Meek. Meek came in for uh, oh, Dream Chasers. Yeah, Meek. And so, like, he was riding around on like a Razor scooter. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah. "Yo, I want ten of these for my house." I'm like, dude, <laughs> you, could, "You could dream a little higher." <laughs> Uh, who else was there? Big Sean. Big Sean was there, and he was talking about yeah. his new song with Justin Bieber. He came. Remember I think that? he came in. And he gave everybody a hug. Yeah, <laughs> super nice guy. That's big right. Sean. That's some, that's some big. Oh wait, I was there when Big Sean was there. I think. Yeah. Hey, wait. Wait. No, no, no. It was an older office. No, because he came in before, but he came in with Rory before I I didn't knew who Rory was, and now he's on Joe Budden's podcast. Oh, Rory was in the office. Yeah, he was like not his manager, but he did something where like he would communicate with him or some shit. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, those are all fun. There's like, there like a weird different era. There was like eras too, like because when it was on Twenty Third Street, it was just like um, it was just Echo and like G Unit, you know. So it was like fifty, like stories like fifty. And then once we moved to another building, they started doing the collabs with like Meek Mill. And complex like, is in the uh, building. Yeah. yeah, complex was in that. You know, and then and then when it got to the building that that I met you in, it was just all kinds of craziness. It was like we were on top of the DHL fans. storage building. Yeah, yeah, with the rooftop. I was only there for I think a year, and then I and then I dipped. You remember yeah, when I, Kanye was there? Yeah, I remember Kanye. Shoe for him. It was like based off an of old Nike ACG and it had the bear logo on the on the bottom. You talking to me? 
I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys were there actually. I wasn't there. Was <laughs> yeah. And then no, and then him and Consequence performed. Remember? No, I remember that. I remember that day. Yeah, yeah. I remember like the, the. I think it was Consequence's album was just dropping yeah. or something, and they did. Yeah, yeah. They did a live performance in the office in like the showroom. I remember Consequence had some Jordan fours, and they were choked up super tight. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, geez. let those breathe. Yeah, I hear stories like this, and I get so mad that I started working there at that time. That's weird. That's like, like I always, I always think about these things. It's like I always get into companies, like not when they're like underground, you know, like you know yeah. when you talk about people, it's like yeah, I was with Supreme when they first started and stuff. I always get into companies when they're like, they just got the money, so it's like yeah. shit yeah. is fun, and then you know, yes. and then you're there, and then you're with them as they go like, you know, <laughs> you're getting less money and. But it's what, it, it's what it is. Yeah, I seem to tap on to sinking ships and hold on too tight. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you was guys I was there with you. Yeah. yeah. We both bounced. And then how long were you there afterwards? Um, I was one of the, like, the last last. Like, I wasn't Caruana last. Like, but I was there f- after. I, I was there through another hiring and firing. Ah, uh, okay. Crazy. Which was only like wanna. a year, <laughs> like it wasn't. It wasn't even that long. <clears throat> now you guys mentioned a lot of rappers. I, I did have a question for you, and um, because this is to me, this is a big story that happened this week. Uh, Takashi Six Nine uh, just oh, he's dropped. Back. <laughs> he's uh, back. He's and, back. And uh, and he puts out an Instagram live, uh, you know, with him, and he's getting two million followers and two million viewers. And um, and he dropped this a single, and I just want to know, like, what the what's going? I mean, obviously, like I said, you know, I'll never, you know, he he snitched, he did what he did. Uh, I'm not gonna be the person who's gonna be like, this kid is a rat. He's taking advantage of to me what the industry and what people are are, are doing. He's providing them a product. But uh, did you guys watch it? Did you guys think anything of it? Uh, I only saw like little clips that people have been posting on like their Instagram stories and stuff, but it looked colorful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how people feel about these things. You, you know, like the generation of people who like listen to like hip hop now. Like, I don't think they care about people who are like you know rats or whatever snitches and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like they like they don't care about ghostwriters and mm-hmm. things like that. It's like it's a different generation. So when I see people it's like, oh, you know, why are you fucking with his music? It's like, I mean, I don't know. That's mm-hmm. like a it's a, a a newer generation, I guess. He he kind of has this weird attachment to him, sort of like I don't want to compare him to like what a Supreme is, but like when you, people say Six Nine, it's like the brand name of modern rap, and I don't think really. It's I don't even really know how to describe it. He's like this weird TMZ version of a superstar rapper. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's just more of like, it's similar to a Kardashian, I think. Like, no one really knows why they follow him, but he's entertaining, so they do. And no matter how many things are wrong with the situation, they're like, well, he's just what we're following right now. So I guess that's it. Like, I, mean, I don't I even know how to describe it. I never, I never thought his music sounded bad, though. I th- when, it, when it came out, it sounded, <clears throat> I mean, it was sounded a little bit refreshing of, like, what was out at the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it was loud. It was kind of, like, in your face. I was yeah. talking to my brother about this the other day because we were listening to um, Rizelda. I think he was listening to the new West Side Gun or something. We were just talking about like how that kind of uh, like hard shit is coming back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool, you know? So I was wondering, I was like, yo, who owns the rights to like do, 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 you know? <laughs> oh, oh, the, oh. the, the, the <laughs> You know, like that's, I'm like someone needs to put some rights on that. They can just make millions. But I, def- I definitely think he's uh he's talented and he he's he's controversial, which sells. And yeah. I mean, this is you know this is a huge thing. I mean, obviously, you know, it's almost. I mean, the fact that he's embracing what he did and he's like, I did this. You know, he there was a point in the video, his music video where he has an umbrella and he covers his his face and then he lifts the umbrella up and it's a like a like a snapchat filter of a rat like taking over his <laughs> oh, face. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's so, just 
That's crazy, man. Well, how like I mean, um, has he lost any of his cosigns? Like, like yeah, all of them, yeah. basically all of them. Yeah, but no, he still gets a two million viewed Instagram story, like the highest live yeah. they've ever had. So it, I, he doesn't need him anymore. He made his own cosign, I guess. I guess so. I, I was reading before this podcast started. Uh, uh, this there's an alleged story, and once again, you know, you know, things change. But allegedly, he's supposed to be signing with uh, Jay Z's Rock Nation. And now, once again, I, I don't want to sit here and be like that's 100 <laughs> percent true. What? Because, but uh, yeah. reportedly, I don't. I don't, once again, I don't know. You know, obviously, next week, well, we may know a little bit more, but. Listen, I mean, no, uh, my way is, to believe that one. That one is that one is way out there. Get out of the Bro, you've been house. shaking your head the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the memes. I just want to see more people transform the rats. <laughs> yeah, the memes are good. The memes are good. He's I mean, a walking Jay-Z, meme. That's why yeah. he's inter- he's he entertaining. Is. That's what it yeah. is. Jay Z once said, "What men lie." Women lie, numbers don't. And if you could do two mil on Instagram and, and sell all this shit, ah, I don't know. Oh man. Ooh. So, so. I uh I don't know. I it's weird because like it it's it's similar but different to things like R. Kelly. And I know that's a weird comparison, but it's like do you separate <laughs> don't do that. Shut up. Let me get to my point. Hold on. It's do you it's like do you separate the person from the music? Cause like like Raph, like what you said, I like the music, but I'm not really kind of like with what he's about and what he's doing. But I mean, do you care? Like, if someone's a rat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're not I, like the thing is we're not like we're not in the game. No. It really matter to us. You know. That I mean, thing? you would you would think by principle because I know snitching is like garnered as like this weird gang thing, but snitching is all over the place. Like I grew up with my dad going like, "Yo, don't like if you're gonna tell on your sister, like don't be so like." Like a rat, like don't be a snitch. Like what do you like? You know, you yeah. can figure out other ways to do this. So I grew up with like going like, oh, don't tell on people. So it's similar, but I'm in a white suburban neighborhood having nothing to do with this gang related shit. So by dude, principle, I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't really worried like it. Dude. I'm honestly worried for that dude because you know you got people like Pop Smoke, XXX. You know. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, like how long can you you play this role? I mean, you mm-hmm. get two million dollars now, but how long is that gonna last? How long are you gonna be around? You know, I don't want to mean to bring it all down, but that dude is, he's fucking with the wrong people. Well, I know, I totally agree with you. I mean, yesterday he, uh, there was, I guess, uh, some girl, she uh, she saw Takashi, like, I guess they were in Long Island, and she found out where he lived, and then she posted oh, yeah, it on that. her, like, and then, you know, so stuff like this, it's like, this kid is not trying to be in witness protection, and, you know, he's trying to live a normal life, and, and it's like, how long can that you know that last not you know and I, I agree with you Ross. it's not like bringing it down it's just being real like how long can this go on yeah because yeah. so. even with the video he's like provoking it's very like you know provocative yeah. like mm-hmm. come get me you know mm-hmm. if it has that vibe to it for sure i gotta see this video <laughs> <laughs> there is it's, a, it's, a, it's a full video yeah, it's yeah. for the song. Yeah, it's like three minutes, like two, three, was it? Three minute video? It, yeah. it kind of looks okay. like he bought an empty house and just like fucked it up for the video. No, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, whatever. It's cool. It's entertaining, you know? Yeah. It's entertaining, you know? And once again, we're all, we're all you know, grown men, you know, in, in our 30s, except for Luke. But I mean, you know. It's, <laughs> Just young Luke, and um, <laughs> you know, so so obviously, you know, we we've seen the the pop, the biggie, like you know, the 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 Wu Tang, like Nas, like all of that, you know, East Coast, you know, mm-hmm. rap. We've seen like we've seen how it was, and now you see how it is now, and it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to ever be that old dude who's yelling at like the kids to get off my lawn. Like it's like I right, like if this is you're rap, already like, that I, guy, dude. <laughs> nah, 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 you know why? Because I try to fuck with the young. I try to listen to the the younger music and just try. I mean, once again, I don't understand it all, but I get it. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know. So I mean, I guess I like Takashi. I think he's entertaining. You know? 
Mm -hmm. it, so. It's a real problem because I don't want to necessarily associate myself with him, but I do want him in my playlist in some respect. Yeah. I don't think I have him in my playlist, though. That's a little too <laughs> loud. <laughs> <laughs> Scare your dog. I'll listen, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll watch a video, but I go, oh, that's kind of cool. But I don't know. I can't look walking down the street with that. At, when I was still at Sprayground, uh, they wanted to do a bag with him. But then Raekwon said if we did a bag with him, he wouldn't collab with us. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. And I had already do? done. Uh, I had already. We picked Raekwon. Wow. That's hey, surprising. Um, uh, mostly because. You're not trying to sell backpacks. You're not trying to sell, you know. <laughs> And you know what? Yeah. The bag isn't even out yet. I don't yeah. think they even made the Raekwon bag. Because I did the bag. I haven't seen it. I pay attention. Oh, yeah. I love Raekwon, but if I was trying to sell some backpacks, yeah. I might have gone the other way. Oh, it's so easy. You just do the different colored uh, teeth for the shark. <laughs> yeah. It's right there. It's a All the zippers could be different colors. All the yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so it's easy. It's dude. I think, I think Raekwon <laughs> was speaking for most of the elder rap community. Yeah. I don't think he would... I think he said, if you do this with him, I don't think anyone's going to, I don't know exactly what I'm sure, I'm there. sure that's more of the vibe of it. Uh, I'm sh like, you know, it's, it's drawing a line in the sand, I guess. I guess when you're a member of Wu-Tang, you can speak for all of rap. <laughs> <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, real quick, uh, you know, I do have a question for uh, both of you guys. Um, you know, obviously with, with, with COVID going on and you, you, uh, you normally work in an office space, correct? Or? Yes. Um, uh, I work at home. You work at home. Okay. Uh, Raphael, you said that, right? You work at home? Mm-hmm. How, how much different do you think, especially like you being on the on the West Coast, like do you think like in terms of the, when you're able to at least, will you want to go back to office? Like how will things change? Because I know like everything is like turned upside down right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to still be working, so I'll be going back on the 18th. And, um, you know, oh, yeah? it's going to be a requirement that you wear the mask. We can't be in close proximity with anybody. we got to be six feet apart, all the desks. Um, they're handing out, like, little kits with hand sanitizer. It's going to be a while before anyone touches, you know, mm -hmm. each other any handshakes or anything like that. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to be touching anybody. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go back or do you have the option to work from home? It's optional. It's optional because some of the schools are closed too. So if you have, you know, oh, true, other true, true, true. Yeah, responsibilities yeah. or, you know, people are sick, you don't have to, but, you know, they're slowly starting to open everything up. I mean, I just came back from driving to pick up some food and, and the streets is, you know, everyone's out. I don't know how it is yeah. in New York, yeah, but everyone's out. There's, there's, there's definitely people, um, like whenever the weather's nice, like today, it's like there's people loitering outside the bars, like the bars are selling beers. So in yeah. my neighborhood, people people are just like drinking outside. No masks. No masks. No. I mean, they have the masks like over, like under their chin, but they're all just loitering outside. And like right down, like I live next to an avenue, which is like all bars. So it's like pretty much the whole avenue is just out. I don't know so about you guys, but, but I get really annoyed when the guys don't cover their nose mm -hmm. with the mask. Yeah. To me, yeah. it's like wearing underwear, but then having your dick out. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say something to my... To the, to the dude who was like cutting my cheese at the groceries. Hey. He was like slicing, <laughs> slicing my cheese. I was just like, I was about to be like, yo, man. But then I also like, oh, he's like, he's like a, an essential worker. Can't be like busting his chops. Yeah. yeah what do you guys think? Yeah. Is there going to be a second wave or like? Oh, for sure. I think for sure. Early, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's going to be a second wave. I mean, it's. People it's, are fucking it's up like, already. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think I said this last week, but I, I was in I was in Fort Greene like a week and a half ago, and it was like fucking Mardi Gras during um, in New Orleans. People were just drinking on the street, hammered. Sun's still yeah. out. I was like, I was, yeah, we're never getting out of this. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. keep doing this shit. Yeah, especially I, I think New York. I think New York City is going to be uh, it's very interesting because of the amount of people and how packed they are on top of each other at least in california you know it's a lot different i have friends in cali it's, it's a lot you know open a lot you know you're driving you're not as on top of people exactly but in the, in new york it's kind of like fuck like you know you are gonna have to reopen and you you see people being completely frustrated at you know at a situation where they're not able to kind of resume some sort of normalcy but 
at the same time, it's like you said, you, what are you going to do? You're going to go back into the office and, and, and be packed on top of each other, get back on the subway. Like Mm -hmm. there's gotta be something, you know, and, and I, and who knows? I mean, we just saw, I just saw in, uh, in Korea where there was one dude, he infected like a whole bunch of people. And then they just shut down every club in Seoul again because of one dude. Right. Mm. One nightclub. 2100, mm. I'm a bunch of nightclubs because of one guy. So, um, who knows? Yeah, so, uh, Ro, you have an extra room in your house? So I can get out of here and avoid it. I got you. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we, got, we got the guest room ready. Bring all your Same. Reeboks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think we're kind of at a point where we can start to wrap this up. Is there any th- last thoughts or topics from you guys, Luke or uh, L? Um, I feel like it's just because we're a sneaker sh- show, we should talk about them. The off-white, uh, the dunks. Oh, yeah. Oh, not the, the rubber, dunks. The, the rubber, rubber dunks. dunks, yeah. Rubber yeah, dunks. That, those, yeah. those sewer rubber covers dunks. that they made into shoes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Are those, are those, those are a new, like, silhouette or is it a remake of something? They look like they're parts of a bunch of different shoes. Yeah, it definitely does, yeah. I've never seen that one specifically, but, it, yeah, it looks like it's something that they either revamped or it doesn't look like that's a lot of new shit there. Dude, he's, like, throwing a bunch of ideas on one thing. It's a dunk sole with an air bubble. Mm-hmm. With oh, like that, is, that, is that why it's called a dunk? Because it's the dunk sole? Yeah, I think so. It, yeah, the rest of it doesn't like, look yeah. like a dunk. No. It looks like he mismatched a lot. Like, I don't know other than the sole and the, like only the, I guess, the toe area of part of the sole. It, it looks like a dunk that I recognize. The thing mm-hmm. is, a dunk sole is the same as an Air Jordan sole, isn't it? Yeah, right? Um, so why wouldn't they be a Jordan 1? I think the, I think, uh, the tooling yeah. on the bottom is a little different, but I can't be sure. I don't want to go on record saying that, but I think they're different enough yeah. where. The, the yellow ones aren't bad. I think those are kind of cool. Cheney's very anti-yellow sneakers, but I agree. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they yellow. just they look like bananas on your feet. I mean, with these are the black soil, it looks kind of normal, but I mean, it's still they, you still look like you have banana feet. Mhm. Nah, I don't know. I like I like yellow. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, I was thinking about this when you sent it to me earlier. You guys might you guys might be too young for it, but there's, back when I was a kid, there was this cartoon called uh, Centurions. Centurions. Uh, that Centurions. name sounds familiar. So C E N T U R I O N S. Oh yeah. And it and it it looks like th- um all three of the guys. <laughs> like the oh colorway. shit. <laughs> Wait, Luke, you got it up? Throw it on. Screen. I got it. I got it. Hold on. <laughs> Look at this shit, <laughs> bro. Oh yeah, Centurions. bro. He's just doing centur- mm-hmm. Centurions, man. That's nuts. Look at these guys. That's pretty funny. That's great. I mean, it's oh. like land, attachment. And, it was land, and sea, and like air. Oh hell yeah! yeah. That's just, I'm showing my age right now. <laughs> I'm all for it. Like, like the more I look at them, I'm, I'm growing. They're growing on me. Yeah, I don't know about the gum sole on the silver. That looks kind of weird. Everybody, no, we, gums love we gum sole. We were talking about the gums. I we love gum sole. Like all gums. white. But yeah. how that's broken up with the blue air bubble on the gum soles kind of mm-hmm. can't even see that. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, Something Rap, is, the, is this the first time you've seen those? Yeah. I mean, when you sent it to me earlier today. I wow. just, I'm just seeing them now. Yeah. There's something that kind the, of the, like the, an air the, trainer, too, right? The bubble reminds yeah. me of something. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. Almost like, oh, and actually, it looks like one of those hang tags, you know, like when you have like a plastic. Thingy, and you put it like on the oh yeah kind of in like the store yeah the oh, hanger I, that. <clears throat> I don't know it has like a weird tearaway piece on it oh yeah it does yeah I don't oh, know. Wow. is this his first kind of like original like um, original silhouette for Nike ar- I mean it's kind of arguable because I don't really know where he pulled this from or if he what if he changed it anything on it but I oh, mean okay um i mean you 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 don't count the uh no the vapor streets and all now those are i would say this is what one of the first yeah first? it's probably his most original out of all of them mm-hmm. yeah 
I mean, I don't hate it. I can see people wearing it. Oh, you! I mean, definitely yeah. people are going to wear these I, without a shadow of a doubt, man. Um, is that the is that like the word on the street? Like people people are feeling them, or I. I, I think anytime I think we've come to understand that anything that Nike and Virgil have collabed on is people mm-hmm. are going to flock to it. It's, yeah, it, it's just it's this been is, this way. There hasn't been yeah. there hasn't been a miss. There hasn't been a miss yet. You you can't miss when you check all the hype boxes. Yeah, like no matter what he makes, it will it will, it will hit the hype level just because of all the boxes he hits the name the uh, the train he's already on it's the momentum it's all that shit he's not going to really come up with a necessarily bad shoe yeah lawrence i think has one i was going to say we can say that i I mean i i'm going to say that the the vapor streets and the tigers they weren't you know they were kind of misses but they still like people yeah they still sold out they still sold they wear them you know like Mm -hmm. it's not but there's, I understand, like, that was the only argument I would make, too, is, like, the Vapor Streets or the Tigers, because it's just, like, those are, you know, they're good shoes, but, like, I mean, people like those shoes a lot. I don't personally like them, but uh, there are people you, who seem to wear them. When you think of Virgil wow. and Off-White, it, you, you obviously think of the 10. That's the first yeah. thing that comes to your, mm-hmm. your mind, which all of those were, you know, done well. Mm-hmm. Um these rubber dunks, like I said, they're going to – I still think because – and once again, where we're at in terms of 2020 with dunks and all this, just the, the fact that it has that name attached to it, they're going to fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, Ro, is uh, the off-white stuff over in Cali kind of hitting? Because, I mean, here it's huge, obviously. But what, what do you see that kind of stuff in West Coast? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, it's mostly – I don't want to stereotype, but when I went to <laughs> no, no, I, I went to I know no, stereotype, played stereotype. Yeah, oh yeah, big time. Yeah, Mostly yeah. Asian people wearing it. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I went to Japan, everyone was Chinese that was rocking. Yeah, boys. every the Chinese love. Not love even off Japanese boys. people. They love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I work at uh, Midtown Comics during the daytime. So uh, I'll see like tourists all the time. And it's always like, if you see like a Chinese family come in, you know they're Chinese because they're wearing off-white everything. <laughs> like they look like a fucking, like a checkerboard. They just walk in all wearing, uh, somebody's wearing Balenciaga. Like they all go for like the big designer brands. That's yeah. why, and they just love off-white for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, off, off-white Balenciaga, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the uniform. That's the yeah, uniform. The, the, the sk- you got the off-white top, the skinny-ass jeans that are way too tight, and then the Balenciaga is arguably bigger than the jeans. Exactly. Like that big. It's the move. It's a look. It's a it's look. It's the look. Um, I don't bag it. I don't, I'm looking at these ones, these Vapor Streets and these uh, – Yeah. The Kyger. They remind me of, like, back when I was running track. and like. Uh, yeah, exactly. People, people would, like – they would be, like, these uh, indoor, indoor track – shoes so they would have like the spikes on the rubber spikes mm-hmm. and you're not you're, you're not really supposed to wear them just walking around because i think it'll fuck up your your feet but yeah but they were so cool looking back then that people would do that they would just wear like or they would take the track spikes and they'll, they'll unscrew the track spike and just wear that so then you hear them like clickety clacking mm-hmm. sometimes <laughs> 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 Did well, you, I think uh, that can kind of, I think that can kind of wrap this one up. Unless, yes. was there anything else? Four fifty ones. Which one's? Oh four? yeah, did you guys see those? The new Yeezy. The, there's a sample came out. It looks like he stepped in some shit that be, they like a venom <laughs> is on the bottom of his shoe. No, nah, bro. Whoa. It looks like it looks like snake skin. Like a s- snake oh. shedded skin. <laughs> no, it looks like venom is a, a, a t- taking over his shoe from the bottom. Oh yeah, I guess. That's what you call like um. I remember when I was working in clothes, it's like, it's like, oh, it has no hanger appeal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, it doesn't look, it doesn't have. <laughs> and because, yeah, these would hang from a hanger. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, this I wonder they how they like feel. Feet? I, I liked these when we first saw them a while ago because they were like firmer and they looked like, honestly, an old school Reebok that I would wear. Like those and ones right there, the, the blue, black, and white ones. These guys? Yeah, like that, yeah, that's more of my jam. Not like these ran over old tires. They, they remind me of like the old, like um, actually Adidas like basketball shoes. Back they look like some a, a 90s, yes. A 90s yeah, definitely 90s vibe. Yes. 
Cool. So remember, I used to have a pair of Adidas called like the Rat Balls. Rat Balls. Adidas <laughs> Rat Ball. He's just having a good time going down memory lane now. Yeah, I know. Right? That's, that's that's like my favorite shit. <laughs> they had like a weird, had like a weird soul like that, almost like a. Anyway, cool. whatever. I got it. These. Yeah, like where like the soles are like all kinds of like weird Those shapes. You have, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Those things look a little floppy to me. Yeah, I don't know. Too oh, floppy yeah. for me. But I guess he's just going in the whole. You know, he always goes in the opposite direction. Everyone's into the chunky shit, so he'll go a floppy. <laughs> Floppy's yeah. the wave. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's the that type of sneaker that you need to, like, your pants need to be a certain skinniness or mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> you yeah, just, no. No baggy like, jeans on that. Like, Ch yeah, Cheney, you can't wear those. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Let's call this. A, let's call this a wrap, so we can get ready yeah. to watch the doc, and maybe yes. Raph, you can watch maybe the first app. <laughs> Start catching up. Well, I gotta get back yeah. to work. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys right. have any final thoughts? Uh, no. Just thanks. Thanks for having us. Can we find uh, you guys fun. anywhere on the internet? Can the listeners um, locate you? Probably, probably just on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is uh, oxtails with cocktails uh, with periods in between. Nice. And yes. and you pop up in the Discord once in a while, so uh, the listeners yeah, yeah. can already catch you there. Yeah. 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 What about you, Ro? What do you got? Uh, Instagram, at Romeo Rex. They also both submitted for the, the New York t-shirt contest. Oh, yeah. We didn't oh, even yeah, fucking yeah. talk oh, about yeah. that. Shit. Yeah, oh, we my got God. so into this shit. We I totally forgot until now. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You should buy my, you should buy my shit. <laughs> yeah, buy wait, I guess. It's for a good shot. It's for a good cause. Yeah, can you guys, like, one of you guys paraphrase what this was and then kind of, like, just quickly talk about where your shirt ideas came from? Okay. Uh, well, it was started from uh, New York Nico. He's kind yeah. of like a... Um, Huge on Instagram for like um, New York talent. Uh, well, he hosted this thing that was like New York best New York accent, like a, a couple months ago, and it be, it became huge. So then uh, he followed it up by doing um, trying to ask people to do like oh best New York T-shirt, and they did it for uh, charity, and it was kind of like a contest. So a bunch of people just entered um, what they thought would be like a good T-shirt that represented New York. So uh, I did one. A bunch of friends did one. This guy did one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you guys actually got uh, more of the. I don't know if it's just because I'm already friends with you guys on Instagram. My algorithms like catered to the kind of what you post, but a lot of people mm -hmm. were posting your stuff versus a lot of the other posts that I saw, at least. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, he, yeah. he made it to the top sixteen, so. Yeah, I mean, you were <laughs> Rogue got a nice little high snobiety <laughs> fucking shout out there, oh, right buddy. when you click on that yeah. shit. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. It was crazy. I was like seriously late. I was on the West Coast time. We're supposed to have it by 10 o'clock. I was in the shower. I was like, dude, I, I got no ideas. And then it came to me and I just like fucking typed it up real quick, like looked up an old eye chart. I was trying to play up off the whole COVID thing where you got to stand back and, you know, yeah, back off new type New York attitude. And I, like, the whole idea is I wanted that shit in Canal Street. I wanted it like yeah. next to my old crib, you know, next to the like, fuck you, you fucking fucks. And, Welcome to New York, Duck, like that type of shit. That was, you know, I know my design wasn't like streetwear, it wasn't the coolest looking thing, but I had a different agenda and it, it made it pretty far for what it was. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And you, you should, are you still selling it? You're still doing the pre-order? Or is that done? Yeah, it's on there. It's on there for, uh, you know, I'm not like big on promotions, but it's up there. It's on Custom Inc., was it? We'll help yeah. you out. I'll get the link from you and yeah, I'll put it in the description. Oh, yeah, buy it. There's kid sizes, you know. And uh, yeah, I've been you. blasting. I've been blasting rafts where I can, so I'll make sure those those links get to where they need to be. But yeah, that was the Appreciate shit. It. That was yeah. cool. I I just Don't found out about it because um, raft posted the you did the um the chicken one, or the, like in the pig, the pigeon in yeah. the chicken box. And I was like, oh yeah. shit, yeah, my yeah. man's just making teas now and shit. Then I started looking. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a contest. Like I missed the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. You should have entered, man. I didn't know, yeah, but also, I, I I'm from Boston. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that kind of shit. Uh, uh, nah. you, How long you been scared. in New York? <laughs> I mean, no, dude. I already. 
the, you the, gotta take, the you two gotta, main you gotta, things <laughs> I get ripped on, especially by these guys, is the Reeboks and then the Boston shit. A lot of the, like, even after you guys left and the other companies came in, like Wu-Tang and, like, and, and A-Life kind of, like, stayed around and shit, they were basically like, yeah, you're, like, cool, I guess, but you're from Boston, so we don't really know what to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It comes back to the, you know, the Celtics. Yeah, uh, Raph so. and Rome, thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate yeah, thank it. You guys. Yeah, appreciate thank you guys. You guys. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. So yeah, I episode just... 112. Um at LZD325, at Trevises, at not that Cheney, um, at Sub Podcast NYC. We got the email. You can text us on our Google Voice, which is attached to the Instagram. Um, and then the Discord. So bro, I'll send you an info for the Discord too. You gotta hop in. All right. I'll do that. Awesome. All right, cool. All right, thanks, guys. Right, thanks, Appreciate guys. you. Appreciate it. Stay safe. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, later.